Hello and welcome to our latest video feature where we'll be trying to pinpoint some lively outsiders for the 2016 Krabby's Grand National. <laughs> I've been joined by Dan Torrey and Mike White, um, and we're going to start with Dan, who fancies a Willie Williams trained horse. Yeah, I really like Boston Bob. He's a multiple grade one winner. Uh, he showed a lot last time coming back to form in the Bobby Joe Chase. Okay, he didn't win by far, but it was more how he was staying on to all the way to the line, which really caught my eye. Uh, okay, he's had a bit, of a bit of a spell in the doldrums, but he's back to the former two years ago, where he won the Melling Chase at this festival, followed up in the Punchestown Gold Cup. He's a top stayer. Now at the veteran stage, he's ideally placed, I think, to run a big race in the National. Yeah, I can't disagree with you there, Dan. Um, and Mikey, Mike likes a couple of um, Irish train runners. Uh, the first of those, which is Usala Conti from the Gordon Elliott Yard. Yeah, there's two Contis in the race this year, and it's the lesser-known Uccello Conti that I think you should be looking at. He's trained by Gordon Elliott, and he's a Muna and Suede import from France. Um, he's finished uh, second and third in three-mile heavy ground races last twice and he doesn't really like that kind of ground. Every time he's encountered ground with good in it, he's won. So he's definitely one to keep an eye on and could be ahead of the handicapper. Um, he finished second to Manella for, for you, um, who is useful, and he beat Folsom Blue three lengths, giving him a stone on the heavy ground. Now, Folsom Blue has just finished fourth in the Irish National um, at the weekend, and this horse has also finished third in a heavy ground Thyestes chase, uh, beaten by My Murphy and Marla Beach, who he also gave a little bit of weight to. Um, he's clearly got a lot of ability. He, he's been staying on at the end of all of his races, and I think he's a fantastic price at 33 to 1. Uh, and you also like another Irish trained horse in Gallant Oscar? Yeah, Gallant Oscar. He's another JP McManus horse um, who looks like he's going to run well here. Um, AJ Martin, he's quite a shrewd trainer, and this is a horse that's been waiting for the good ground, a bit like Uccello Conti. Um, 10-8 is a perfect race and weight for him. The only worry with him is that he's kind of a hold-up horse. He'll need the luck as he comes through the field, but he certainly stays and he'll certainly be about thereabouts if he stays on his feet. Uh, yeah, and I'm going to add uh, O'Fallon's boy into the mix for Rebecca Curtis. Um, he's priced at 50 to 1. Uh, you don't have to go back too far for some good form. Uh, you may have missed the 2014-15 season, um, but he won the 2014 RSA chase where, where he beat Smad Place, and he also beat Many Clouds as a novice as well in that season. Um, he made a disappoint. He, he won when he came back, he won uh, at Ascot on his comeback, but then he disappointed um, in the Cotswold chase, um, but it came to light that he, he had a wind problem there, and he has had a little wind up, uh, had a spin over hurdles, and he looked like he was coming back to form in the Gold Cup. He was run, running really well, um, and he just weakened out at the end, and I know connections have, have targeted this race, and I think he's definitely got the class. Um, and with a bit of luck, 50 to 1, I think he is a, is a, is a, a value each way um, selection. Um, go back to Dan, um, and you've got Rule the World is also 50 to 1. Yeah, um, this is a, a bit of a speculative selection, let's be perfectly honest. He probably wouldn't be the top treads horse in the fact that he's, uh, he's still a novice, he's never actually won a race, well, well over three miles. Uh, but. You look at his profile, he's been placed in an Irish National and a Kerry National. Um, he probably would have won the Galway Plate, although it's difficult to say that, but he slipped up there. Uh, but he was travelling by the way, he was well supported that day as well. Uh, he's been a runner-up in the Grade 1, he's got the talent there, and he just hasn't put it all together. Uh, this is a tough race to put it all together in, um, let's not beat about the bush here, but I think he's got ability, he's got a lot of ability, and if he turns up and runs his race, 50 to 1, is a, I think, is a good bet for a place. Uh, who knows, he might well go on better. And Mikey, uh, Mike, sorry, you also like Sheila Delane. Um, you want to give him yeah. a mention? Yeah, the Nick Henderson horse, he's, he's a quality animal. He's won a Topham, he's won a Hennessy, and he was very, very good at Kempton this season, uh, despite Pitsy Zig falling when he kind of looked beat. Um, the ground will be fine, he'll love the ground. Uh, I don't think his mark's prohibitive and I'm, I'm readily willing to forgive his last attempt in the National. The thing with Triolo de Delane is that the way he's ridden is quite important. If you hold him up, he can get quite bored. Um, so if, you, if they ride him nice and prominently, 33 to 1 could look a short price. Yeah, he's definitely got two ways of running, and when, when he goes well, he, he goes very well. 
Um, I'm going to end proceedings with another 50 to 1 shot. Um, it's quite speculative, a bit like Dan's. Um, and this is a David Pike trained soul. Um, I know a lot of people, a lot of punters, uh, you, you want to see your punters at the Grand National just looking for a horse uh, to give you a good run for your money. Um, he may not be the flashiest, um, but he's, he's run OK in two nationals. Um, he is on a lot higher mark than he was. Um, he's £13 higher than last year when he finished ninth. Um, but it did come to light after then uh, that he uh, broke a blood vessel. Um, and he was in the, quite, the process of running quite a good race there. Um, so if he can be intact, keep himself intact, um, I think he could outrun his odds and at 50 to 1 he could be, could be one to sneak a place.